All right, hello YouTube. So today I'm going to be talking to you about this book here called uh, Mao's China and After by Mr. Maurice Meissner. <clears throat> you can see my copy got a bit chewed up there. The dog is currently here, got at it, and uh, yeah, so, but it's all good anyway. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty like sizable tome here, um, kind of focusing on, it really covers the 20th century in China. Um, it's pretty like well-known text in, you know, Chinese history and in kind of like Maoist studies, if you will. Um, the author Maurice Meissner was a, uh, like a scholar of Chinese history before it was really cool, not that it's very cool now, um, he's an American guy. <clears throat> but uh, he wrote quite extensively on it, and um, this book that he put out several editions of, first it was just Mao's China, but then, um, you know, eventually like Mao died, and um, history took a very distinctive course in China, and he had kind of had to revise and he added like pretty significant amount of chapters covering, you know, the rise of Deng into the 90s and, um, you know, just covering how China exactly changed from its original uh, conception, from the original conception of the Communist Revolution, um, which, which kind of is like the uh, methodological framing of the entire book. I'm sorry for the noise. Um, he, he really um, is taking, he's doing like a history from the perspective of the revolution, from the stance of the revolution. And, you know, he kind of like looks at the, all the things that were done in that context, in the context of um, you know, the socialist revolution that these Chinese uh, communists were trying to do. Um, and he, he looks at the change that occurred after the death of Mao and, you know, after the fall of Maoism, basically after the Cultural Revolution. And, you know, you, you need some kind of, like, standard in, in order to be able to even um, discern change. And, you know, the standard that he uses is that of uh, socialism or communis communism, communist revolution. Like, he takes it that that is what they were trying to do. He's not uh, cynical, which is a, it's a, it's a really good thing about the book is that he's actually, like, quite sympathetic. You can, you can tell. Um, usually when I'm reading histories of, like, Russia or China or basically any other um, communist revolution or, or like, a revolutionary period, I'm always kind of... Um, like a bit uh, wary of the author and where their um, sympathies lie because, you know, like the Cold War it was a very real thing. And there are a lot of historians out there who are just writing kind of like anti-communist American kind of imperialist propaganda. And um, Meissner, to his credit, um, is very like sympathetic to the Chinese revolutionaries, to the socialists. And, um, you know, really does a good job of, like, presenting their ideology and, um, you know, using that to contextualize what actually happened, even when he's critical. You know, when you talk about something like the uh, Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution, you kind of have to be critical. Um, I don't think there are many people who consider that historical event to be anything other than a failure, but um, he's at least sympathetic. I, I will say that... Um, he is less sympathetic to Stalin. There are a few moments when um, uh, his like criticism of Stalin does kind of like peek through. It's not it's not a big thing. It doesn't really like um, uh, like t detract from the book in any kind of significant way. But uh, just be prepared for that. He's he's a bit critical of Stalin. <clears throat> um, so I will say that the book is like pretty 
readable, even though it's very much um, an academic work. Um, like there is a narrative, like he he you know talks about uh, the situation in China prior to the revolution, you know, contextualizing the revolution and the revolutionaries who, um, you know, committed that, uh, who like got involved and were like fighting against the Guomindang and whatnot. So there's a narrative that he follows over the course of the 20th century and um, uh, which, which kind of like makes the book itself like more readable. Sorry, the dog is just currently digging a hole for her bone in the bed but yeah so like having that kind of like a historical through line does make it a bit more readable but at the same time there are not too many characters like it's very much um a kind of like survey even as big as the book is it is still very much like a survey it doesn't get too in depth into any of the you know, big events like the Great Leap or the Cultural Revolution. Oh my God! Now she's just like, <laughs> I'm freaking out. But um, yeah, it doesn't get too much into any of that. So, so with that in mind, there are not too many like characters other than Mao. Like, obviously, there are a lot of like um, important people in the history of the Chinese Revolution that you need to make reference to, and he does, and he does. Um, you know, talk about who these people are, like Lin Biao and whatnot, and like um, what their role was and like uh, what they did, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, you know, the narrative is not burdened down with a lot of characters. It's very much like a kind of historical overview um, with a kind of like external perspective of this entire country and you know this great transformation and this great process that was undergone over the course of you know many decades. Um, what else did I want to say about it? I mean, so with that in mind, it's like quite readable. So even though it's like very academic text, if you're interested in um, Chinese history and you know communist history, then I highly recommend it. It's a very good book. It's kind of like a, he's an ally, so he is like a trusted source. And the, the final thing that I will say, the thing that makes this book like such a valuable resource to researchers, people who are doing research, who want to, um, you know, get into this kind of history more extensively. Look, she's she's like lusting at her. She wants to finish the job. She wants to fucking eat the entire thing. Um, but what makes it so valuable is at the end of every chapter, um, they're like very extensive, sorry, you can't see that very well, but they're like quite extensive, um, notes and citations, which make it, um, very easy to do like more reading, you know, like you can, and it's, it also like, um, like, uh, when he's talking about things like uh, ideology, I think it's more important. Like he he cites Marx and Lenin. He cites the writings of Mao to like give um, a real like uh, source to the kind of like ideological or more like theoretical discussions that these these uh, thinkers are having, which I think is very valuable. The the citations alone um, make the book just like such. A valuable resource because the, like there's so much there, so many kind of like original um, texts that if you are so inclined, if any of these like particular chapters kind of jump out of at you and you want to uh, do further reading, then you know you have all of these citations here. There's also like a quite extensive bibliography at the end, so there's a lot of um, data here. There are a lot of citations that you could go back to, and um, you know kind of like a you get the author kind of like talking about uh, the the works that he's referring to and kind of like justifying why he's using them and um, like commenting on them as well. A lot of like, uh, you know, references to like newspaper articles and like the internal documents of the Communist Party and like Mao's theoretical writings and like other theoretical writings from other Maoists and other like Chinese communists and like 
all kinds of stuff. The citations are quite extensive, which makes it a very valuable resource. And um, yeah, so that's all I'll say for that. I mean, I didn't want to do like a super in-depth review. I just wanted to kind of promote uh, this book a little bit. If there are any, you know, Maoists out there, any people who are interested in Chinese history or in communist history in general, I think that it's a, it's a very good book. You'll learn quite a lot. There's a lot of interesting episodes in um, the you know history of the Chinese Communist Revolution. And I feel like people know so much more about Russia than they do about China. Russia gets a lot more press, as it were. But uh, China is more relevant, in my view. Um, so now I have this other book here that I'm planning on reading next. I do, I want to like continue um, my own personal study of uh, Chinese history and um, Maoism. This is another book. It's again, another kind of like academic text, Rise of the Red Engineers by Joel Andreas. It's another like pretty well-known text in this kind of field. Um, I got it just because it was like available. Um, I'm I'm really interested, particularly in in reading like a more in-depth study of the Cultural Revolution. And I also want to read a lot more about like um, art and like actual cultural artifacts. Like I'm really interested in the art of China and the cinema of China. It's not something that I know anything about. Even in again in Russia, when you think about um, Russian culture, like it, it's so well known, like from the early decades of like the revolution, constructivism and all that sort of thing. And like the cinema of, um, of, of Russia. And then, you know, going later on into like social surrealism and all that. And kind of like the, the, the architecture of the Stalin period, it's, it's all very well known, but I don't know anything about Chinese culture or like how social surrealism kind of manifested in China, and I'm, I'm really interested in learning more about that. So I'm, I'm kind of looking for a um, a book that kind of like um, is like a direct is directly about like a art his like an art history text about you know Chinese art in the 20th century, maybe even relating it to Russia just as a point of comparison. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm doing my own kind of research. I'm reading about it quite a bit and uh if you uh if you are also interested in you know researching communist history and theory and whatnot then we have a a discord server that is for you and you can come on and talk to other like-minded individuals and share your readings, your research, um, talk to other people, and uh, you know we can all all uh, you know form a big happy research family. So if you're interested in participating in that, just send me a DM and I'll see you next time.